After 35, male testosterone drops by 1% every single year, and that decline is linked to losing muscle mass and strength, lower energy, weaker bones, and even depression. So it's no surprise that we see tons of supplements like ashwagandha and tonkat ali claiming to boost testosterone. But do these supplements really work, or are they just a waste of money? And more importantly, what's the best way to really tackle falling testosterone levels. So out of the eight famous supplements that are marketed for boosting testosterone, four of them have some evidence of benefit. And we'll start by looking at L-arginine. Because L-arginine is thought to improve blood flow, it's been studied for treating erectile dysfunction, such as this 2019 study, where testosterone levels were also measured. It was a study that looked at diabetic men, and the 108 men were split into four groups. One took a placebo, another took L-arginine, another took the erectile dysfunction pill called Tadalafil, and the last group took both of them together. While the placebo group only had a small 1.5% increase in their testosterone levels, the group taking l arginine saw a 60% jump, and when the L-arginine was combined with Tadalafil, testosterone levels shot up by 144%. Now the exact reason why L-arginine boosted testosterone levels, it's not totally clear, but one idea is that by relaxing blood vessels and improving blood flow, L-arginine helped to treat the erectile dysfunction. Feeling more confident in sexual activities may have made the men feel better about themselves, and that positive feeling may have led to more testosterone being released. It's like a cycle, so feeling better can lead to more testosterone, which makes you feel even better. But another thought is that L-arginine increases nitric oxide, which helps blood flow not just to other parts in the body, but also to the testes, where testosterone is made. So better blood flow to the testes might help them make more testosterone. But before rushing out to buy L-arginine supplements, there's a twist. A big review looked at 54 different studies and found that L-arginine didn't really help much when it came to strength, endurance, or muscle blood flow in healthy active adults. And it's important to look at this conflicting information rather than sweeping it under the rug and cherry picking data. So if L-arginine doesn't really help with blood flow, how did it boost testosterone in that one erectile dysfunction study? Well, that part is a little unclear, but it shows us that we need to look at all of the studies rather than just the ones that show good results. To further muddy the waters, another review looked at the human studies and found that while L-arginine may help improve erectile function, it didn't seem to boost testosterone levels at all. So overall, I'm not sure that L-arginine really does help with testosterone based on the evidence we have right now. It's important to acknowledge these unknowns though. Medicine is not black and white. There's often a lot we still don't know, and hopefully a larger study will come out in the future to give us clearer answers. The second supplement supplement on the list is D-aspartic acid. Aspartic acid is another popular supplement you'll often see marketed as a testosterone booster. It's also an amino acid, and this one is found in the brain. In rats, it's been shown to release hormones that are involved in making testosterone. In rats, aspartic acid activates something called the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis, which is just a fancy term for the system that controls how your body produces testosterone. It's like flipping a switch that tells the body to start making more testosterone. So does it work in humans? Well, there's some evidence that it might. In one study, men took 3 grams of aspartic acid per day and saw their testosterone levels go up by 42% compared to the placebo group. But just like when we had a look at L-arginine, we have to look at the conflicting data and add nuance to the conversation, because a separate study in 2013 of resistance-trained men didn't show any effect on testosterone levels after taking aspartic acid for 28 days. In other words, aspartic acid didn't help the men who were already working out regularly. So while aspartic acid shows promise in some studies, the results aren't consistent across the board. Overall, the animal studies look promising, but the research in humans, it's a bit of a mixed bag. We need more studies to know exactly how helpful aspartic acid will be for boosting testosterone, and it's not a supplement that I personally take. Third on the list is Tonkat Ali. This one's popularity exploded after certain influencers with large audiences started pushing it. It's a herb that's traditionally used in Southeast Asia to improve energy and libido. But what does the evidence actually show? When we look at a meta-analysis that combined five randomized controlled trials together, the results were mixed. Two studies did not show any differences in testosterone levels, while the other three did. 
And when all of the trials were combined together, yes, there was an increase in testosterone levels. But here's the catch. There was evidence of publication bias. That means that studies that showed positive results were more likely to be published, while others that didn't show any effect were less likely to see the light of day. It's like only telling people about your wins and conveniently forgetting to mention your losses. The authors of that analysis conclude that more research is needed before Tonkat Ali's use in clinical practice. And although no major side effects were reported, the European Food Safety Authority has raised concerns about the potential for Tonkat Ali to cause DNA damage, which is definitely something to be aware of. So while Tonkat Ali might have some effect on testosterone, the evidence just isn't strong enough to fully recommend it. And for those new to the channel, it might seem strange for a medical doctor to sound uncertain, but that's clinical medicine. We shouldn't jump to conclusions. We need to be careful and make sure there's solid proof before recommending anything. So with a potential safety concerns of Tonkat Ali, I wouldn't take it. Fourth on the list is betaine, and it's also known as TMG or trimethylglycine. It's a compound that's found in foods like beets, spinach, and wheat bran. It's been shown to have some benefits for athletic performance and testosterone levels, although researchers, they aren't entirely sure how it works. Betaine might increase the creation of creatine and increase the levels of blood nitric acid. So in one study, TMG was given to professional soccer players, and after 14 weeks, compared to a placebo, they showed marked improvements in their one rep max, which is the most weight they could lift in one go, their VO2 max, which is how much oxygen their bodies could use during exercise, and their sprinting performance. On top of that, their testosterone levels increased. But that's just one study. So in 2022, another study showed that TMG increased leg bench and bench press, as well as increasing testosterone compared to placebo. The same again was found in 2023, when TMG was trialed in people who performed CrossFit training. TMG improved CrossFit performance by about 8% compared to placebo, and testosterone was increased by 7%. And while all of that sounds great, there's one thing to watch out for with TMG. High doses, so between 2 and 4 grams, can increase LDL cholesterol. But because of the exercise performance benefits, emerging evidence on the positive effects of testosterone, and TMG lowers homocysteine levels, I chose to include it in microvitamin, but I kept the dose at 500 milligrams so that I could get the benefits from TMG without the downsides. But remember that just because I take a supplement does in no way mean that you should as well. Fifth on the list is DHEA. DHEA is a hormone that's made by the adrenal glands, and the body can convert it into testosterone and other hormones. It's like a raw material that the body can use to make whatever it needs. But because DHA levels, they peak in a person's 20s and then gradually decline, DHEA has been promoted for reversing the effects of aging. But does it really work? While supplementing with DHEA can boost testosterone levels, the effect appears to be greater in women rather than men and in younger rather than older people. But despite boosting testosterone levels in women, the clinical benefit for DHEA appears to be limited. For instance, DHEA supplements, they fail to improve general well-being, muscle mass, or mental function of older people. Plus, if we look at men specifically, multiple studies have shown that DHEA, it doesn't appear to increase levels of testosterone like it does in women, and DHEA supplements do not improve exercise performance. So overall, DHEA appears to increase female testosterone levels, but not male testosterone, and there's no exercise performance benefits. So personally, I don't take DHEA, nor do I recommend it to my patients. Sixth on the list is fenugreek. Fenugreek is one of the most common ingredients you'll find in testosterone boosters. It's believed to help boost testosterone levels by blocking the conversion of testosterone into something called DHT. DHT is a more potent form of testosterone, but too much of it can lead to things like hair loss and prostate problems. So by stopping that conversion, fenugreek is thought to keep more testosterone in the body. So what does the evidence show? Well, one study looked at healthy young men who took 500 milligrams of fenugreek every day for eight weeks while also doing resistance training. This study found that compared to a placebo, fenugreek increased both free testosterone, which is the active form that the body can use, and total testosterone, which includes the active form and the form that's bound to proteins that can't be used. But here's the thing, while testosterone levels went up, muscle strength didn't really improve compared to the placebo group. And on top of that, another hormone called estradiol, which is a form of estrogen, increased by 26%. 
In another study of older men aged between 43 and 70, researchers gave them special fenugreek seed extract called testophen at a dose of 600 mg per day for 12 weeks. That study found that fenugreek increased both free testosterone and total testosterone levels, and it also improved symptoms like muscle weakness, joint complaints, and low libido, which are all signs of low testosterone. So based on these studies, fenugreek might have some benefit for boosting testosterone. But remember, it works by blocking the conversion of testosterone to DHT, and for that reason, I don't use it myself. Instead, I take finasteride 1 milligram. This is a medication that's been studied a lot more, and large studies have shown that finasteride can help reduce the risk of developing prostate cancer. And I go into more detail about finasteride in this video here. Seventh on the list is boron. Boron is a trace element that is naturally present in many foods and is available as a supplement. It may have beneficial effects for things like reproduction, bone health, brain function, and even making hormones like vitamin D, testosterone, and estrogen. Some people have marketed boron as a way to improve athletic performance, saying that it can help boost testosterone levels. But here's the thing. A study that gave 2.5 milligrams of boron to male bodybuilders every day for 7 weeks didn't show any effect on testosterone levels, muscle mass, or strength. The guys who were bodybuilding, they did see improvements in their testosterone and strength, but that was from the exercise, not from the boron. And there's no other human trials that I could find that tested boron and its effects on testosterone. So while boron might be helpful for other areas of health, like bones and brain, the evidence doesn't support it as a testosterone booster or as a performance enhancer. And the final supplement we'll go through is ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is a herb that comes from India, and it's known for its adaptogen qualities. That means that it's claimed to help the body handle stress and support the immune system. Two small studies found that ashwagandha, it might increase testosterone a little. One study on younger men who had fertility issues showed that ashwagandha improved sperm count, sperm volume, and sperm movement. Plus, it raised testosterone levels by 17%. Another study on overweight men aged 40 to 70 found that ashwagandha increased testosterone by about 14.7% after 8 weeks. But even though testosterone went up, it didn't seem to improve their sexual well-being, energy levels, or feelings of vigor. On the flip side, another 2019 study found that while testosterone levels went up in men during the study, the increase wasn't different between those who were taking the ashwagandha supplements and those that were taking the placebo. So overall, the results on ashwagandha are mixed. It may boost testosterone in some people, but the effects aren't particularly strong or consistent. So out of the eight supplements, there are four that have a possible effect. DHEA appears to improve testosterone levels in women, but not so much in men. And the testosterone levels aside, the evidence doesn't seem to support the claims of increased exercise performance or energy. Fenugreek may have a small effect, though it doesn't translate into improved muscle performance. Plus, it works in a similar way to finasteride, which is already used to block the conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. Ashwagandha shows some potential, but the results are mixed. Some studies show that yes, it does help, while others don't. And when it comes to muscle performance, the evidence is even weaker. TMG, on the other hand, looks like it could actually help both with testosterone and muscle performance, and that's why I included it in microvitamin. But instead of relying on supplements, there are two far better ways to boost testosterone levels. We know that if an obese person manages to lose weight, they increase their testosterone levels, and I have separate videos that explain the best ways to lose weight. And we know that doing the work and performing resistance exercise, it significantly boosts testosterone levels. But yes, not everyone has the time to spend at the gym. That's where something called exercise snacks comes in. So exercise snacks are quick mini workouts that you can fit in into the day. For example, after I've seen three patients at the clinic and I'm about to start my 15 minute paperwork break, I do a set of push-ups or one-legged squats or core exercises. These short bursts of activity can add up over time and they can really boost testosterone levels. And speaking of resistance exercise, make sure to check out the next video here that explains how to build muscle faster than 99% of people by training smarter, not harder, by following the recommendations of leading exercise scientists like Dr. Mike Isratel and Professor Brad Schoenfeld. And a massive thank you to all of the Patreons supporting the channel.